So hello, here we are again. Today's topic is 3D printed fittings and combining metal uh, fittings with 3D printed parts uh, to get a watertight parts. So in general, today we discuss fittings. Und drei, uh, 3D. Genau, fittings and 3D prints. Um, I, had some, I had some projects uh, where I needed to combine uh, a hose with something else, like this water block. And I tried multiple things to get it really watertight. And at first I was uh, very surprised uh, because you can print uh, 3D print fittings and they work under certain conditions. You can see, I mean, I made multi mul multiple prototypes um, with 3D printed fittings and they worked, but they had some problems. And one of the problems with 3D printed fittings is uh, they are not very stable. So let's, but let's start with the upsides first. We, we start with 3D. The pros, uh, the, the pros are they are cheap and yeah, yeah you can print them at home. Uh, uh, they are cheap, you can produce them at home, but they also have a problem um, and the biggest problem with them isn't even that they aren't very stable because they are quite stable. I was kind of surprised how rigid they were. I, I were expecting them to snap when you just touch them but they're kind of really sturdy but the problem is another thing. The problem is, I can demonstrate this here, we have two fittings, one metal and one with ABS plastic in 0.1 millimeter thickness printed. And you can see the water inlet is way bigger on the metal one because metal is just stronger and that allows you to have a wider inner diameter. And with the 3D printed one, you get a tiny inner diameter. So we have a flow restriction. Flow restriction. Yes, and that's that's one of the problem and the surface is another problem. Because I'm not sure how good you can see this on camera, but maybe if I show it with uh, this rough sketch uh, if the camera would, yeah, maybe you can see it. Uh, it's really rough around the edges and when you then um, stick a hose over it, you get those tiny slits where, it, it, uh, where the material is uneven and there water can push through. You could now add one of these, I, I don't know what, how those are called in English. Um, but you can combine them. But then again, you can't tighten uh, those up very much with RBS fittings because if you tighten those too much, your fitting will break. And that's why it's best to combine um, those metal clumps just with metal fittings. Yeah, so that's the, the pros and cons of the 3D printed ones. For drafts and quick prototypes, it works. It maybe leaks a few drops on the sides uh, with some pressure, but the most annoying thing is the flow restriction because it, the inner diameter you can do with those are just bad. Also, if you don't print them at uh, 0 0.1 millimeter layer thickness or uh, <laughs> less, then you get uh, easy to break and, and leaky parts. If you want something to be watertight, you have to print it in at least 0.1 millimeter. So 
the next thing we we gonna uh, look at is yeah we you want you you want no flow restriction so you have to go online find some fitting or something have to get it delivered and then you get those um, let us make just another so metal fittings pros and cons so the pros is you won't break those <laughs> you won't probably and uh, so they are rigid they have no flow restriction uh, high flow so but the downside is price they are actually kind of expensive N not really really expensive but <laughs> I mean this one is sense in material and and electricity and this one is like one euro or more depending where you get them so yeah kind of expensive compared to those but you get a little bit more for this for example you get this silicon o-ring uh, which is quite useful because the next question is how to combine uh, a metal fitting with a 3d printed part and it's not so simple because here can you see uh, I tried it on a prototype and uh, on the one side it worked because the downside was completely flat and I could screw it quite uh, tight in there um, actually those are uh, one quarter inch uh, water cooling fittings that's uh, I, I took those because they are available everywhere and the whole thing for water cooling is standardized so I can use parts from different manufacturers and they will fit um, on this side I had a problem the fitting wasn't tight because I had uh, a, a little bit of a printing error beneath it so the surface wasn't flat and the o-ring didn't work so I had to uh, add some epoxy like we always do because a proxy a proxy is awesome you can also see this prototype is coated in it yeah metal fittings if you can combine them they work but the problem is um, again that you have to 3d print a threading so you can screw them in and the, the the threads have to be really tight but not too tight because if they are too tight and you screw it in then the part breaks so it's a little bit of try and error. I, I was getting with uh, this RBS when I printed the it with like 104% size. It was the right size after cooling down and I can just screw them in really nice. They are tight. I don't, uh, on this one I didn't even need a sealing. Yeah, but it's never a bad idea, idea to after you screw them in to just seal it off with epoxy. I mean better better safe than sorry uh, especially when you want to uh, have something run for a long time then it should be tight if you want to have it tight so more epoxy people use more epoxy on fucking everything yeah that's basically it for today um, I hope I could help you a bit and I found out to get threads into parts like these Open SCAD is quite practical. You just can search online for uh, a quarter inch screw, uh, a quarter inch screw fitting, and then you um, just uh, combine the parts in this way that uh, it gets that that the fitting gets subtracted from the part, uh, at least the threading, uh, and yeah, then you have a threading and you can just screw it in there. Uh, I hope that helped. If someone even asked it, ask it questions about this. Actually, uh, I'm just doing the video because, yeah, I, I had to work with fittings on 3D D prints for the first time and kind of wanted to share a little bit of it. And 
in the end we have a little demonstration because I have my my water pump and everything set up here. So this is uh, a RBS 3D printed part, 0.1 millimeter thickness. It's just a cylinder with a wall thickness of about three millimeters and with the uh, with threaded uh, inside uh, on, bo on both sides. So you can just print this and then screw two of them in and then add two of those and it makes an actually tight ceiling. When I now start the pump, maybe you can hear it. So the water flow is in this direction and that's why we're gonna clamp the water flow off if I find my clamp. Where the fuck is the clamp? Ah, found it. So if we now take a clamp, you, you can see there is no leaks but right now there isn't much pressure on it. The pump I have here is about 50 watts and it gets a pressure of 1.5 to 2 bar. So it should be enough for the most things. And now we just clamp this off and we see we still get no leaks. The ABS is tight. The fittings are tight and this is completely without a proxy even. The, the, the fittings just screw into the part so perfectly that it actually makes a tight fit. But for this you have to have a flat surface so the o-ring really works. So I hope this answers if you can make watertight uh, 3D printed fittings and how to combine metal fittings with 3D prints to make watertight things. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and if you have questions just ask me in the comments and uh, see you next time.